Hi, my name is Ruth and I'm 26 years old. At birth, I was diagnosed with a condition called sickle cell anemia. I have had a very unique life because of the condition and have had to adapt to many situations. Over the years, I have struggled to talk about what I have gone through, but now I want to share my story and talk about this complex condition. So this is Sickle Cell, the Invisible Disease. I just remember the first pain episode I had was so painful and I know that my um, parents would be able to recall it a lot better than I would but I just remember having such severe pains and according to them the pain was actually in my legs and what I remember of the situation is being taken to hospital and just being in this really weird place. Obviously, I wouldn't have really known hospitals like that until that situation. And just being in that environment and thinking, I'm in such a weird place right now. What is this? I think they gave me medication because after that, everything just went kind of loopy. It must have been morphine. But I just remember that was like my first time really knowing that I maybe had something wrong with me. The condition sickle cell is an inherited blood disorder which is inherited from some of the genetics from the mum's side and from the dad's side and somebody who has sickle cell can have symptoms of very severe pain in different areas of the body such as the arms and the legs and it can be triggered by many different things. I would say the things that trigger my crisis and from time to time it can be strange things but the main things are is when I get colds, when I'm dehydrated, when I'm stressed and that could come from maybe some physical activity that I've done and the only other thing in really major circumstances if maybe I've caught an infection. So those are the things that kind of trigger my crisis. Growing up with sickle cell, it was quite intense and I think the, the main reason I would say is because I was ill all the time and also just being in a family or having siblings that don't have sickle cell, um, they only have traits and just me being the one only one with sickle cell is kind of hard but I think over time as I've been growing up I feel like it's gotten easier to manage and deal with. The impact on my parents was really, really immense. I know that they they are strong and they also showed me that they're, they're strong, but I know that it was quite heartbreaking. We're a family of faith as well, so a lot of the time we'd pray together and things like that, but for them I knew that it was quite hard for them. There was one point that I remember just being in the ambulance and they were picking me up from the house and they were driving me to another hospital in London. All my siblings and my dad, um, me and my mum were in the ambulance and they were just waving us goodbye and I could genuinely see him tearing up. That was the first time that I think I'd seen him like proper emotional. So I knew that it, deep down it like affected them quite a lot but because they have to be parents, they just do what they have to do. Um, and sometimes I just hope that you know the amount of care and things like that they've given me that they don't kind of resent me for it or feel like I kind of stopped like their plan or purpose in life. Over the past few years sickle cell has been making headlines. Sickle cell disease is the most common and fastest growing genetic blood disorder in the UK. One thing about um, sickle cell it affects the mobility the most and they can't walk very far they can't do too much. I also hope that the Minister will touch on what steps the government will be taking to specifically improve the treatment of, of, of black sickle cell patients because unfortunately NHS is delighted to be able to make um, the first drug, this revolutionary drug, in 20 years. The coverage years. has been impactful and has shed some light on both positive and negative news. From the tragic death of Nathan Smith in 2019, the release of the 2021 No One's Listening report, and news of the newest SC treatment after 20 years called Chrysanlizumab. This presents an opportunity to discuss controversies surrounding the possible stigma, healthcare discrepancies, and the overall support for the SC community.
One person who can shed some light on the condition and the current state of affairs is my sickle cell nurse, Maureen Scarlett. She has worked over 18 years for the Sickle Cell and Thalassemia Clinic in Luton and Dunstable Hospital. She has supported an incredible amount of patients and has extended that support to family and friends too. I am Maureen Scarlett. I am the specialist nurse for sickle cell and thalassemia in Luton. My responsibility as a sickle cell nurse is to support those affected by sickle cell um, to come to terms with the diagnosis before, during pregnancy and after the birth of the child and support the, um, the child, the adult through their lifetime coping and managing with sickle cell. So what, what is sickle cell? It is an inherited uh, genetic um, blood disorder that affects the red blood cell. Um, within our blood we have red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets and sickle cell affects the red blood cell. Um, our red blood cells carry oxygen around to our body so we grow and develop normally and with sickle cell the um, red blood cell goes to the lungs, it picks up oxygen and takes it to other parts of the body. But once it delivers the oxygen, it interacts with the um, lining of the blood cells and it changes shape. A normal red blood cell is quite spongy, it's like a jam donut, it's quite soft and spongy. But once it becomes sickle, it's quite hard and rigid and has long sort of crystal rods. And once it changes to that shape, it can't go back. To being soft and spongy so what you then find it sticks to the, the lining of the blood vessel walls and they start to back up against each other and that blocks the actual um, blood vessel and the problem occurs not because of the blockage but the fact that it's cutting off blood and oxygen to the bit of tissue behind it and that's what causes what they call the sickle crisis There's still very much a stigma around um, sickle cell. Um, even today, um, I have patients who haven't told their GP they have sickle cell or um, they haven't told their community back home in Nigeria, Ghana, that their child has sickle cell, that's been diagnosed with sickle cell here in the UK. They haven't told um, their family because they still feel um, they'll be stigmatized if they go back home. Um, I had a family recently um, had come over and um, the mother hadn't told the child that she had sickle cell because it was still actually a stigma um, for, for her to accept and she thought that her child would be treated differently um, if she knew she had sickle cell or the care that she would get here if they knew she had sickle cell. And I had to educate her and say, no, over here, we want to know your child has sickle cell so we can provide the appropriate care and support for your child at home and in school and in the hospital. Um, but the child also needs to know they have sickle cell, that if they get a pain or something's wrong, they know to actually let somebody know. So there still is that stigma this is Maya Bloomberg, a haematology nurse practitioner from the USA. We connected online after I came across her page educating people on the condition. As I look deeper into the subject, I wanted to know if the same issues or challenges are prevalent in other parts of the world. Hi Maya, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing really, really well. It's so lovely to have you on board and to be a part of this discussion. I feel like you're gonna give great insight and also, also help us understand a bit more about the condition. And so firstly, just so that you can introduce yourself, would you like to tell me where you're based, what you do, who you are? Sure, so a little bit about me. My name is Maya Bloomberg. I'm a hematology nurse practitioner and I've been practicing for 
seven and a half years now, even though it feels like I just started. Before becoming a hematology nurse practitioner, I was a bedside nurse working on a med surge telefloor, so I was exposed to a lot of sickle cell. And then for almost eight years now, I've been a hematology nurse practitioner specializing in sickle cell, bleeding disorder, and clotting disorders. And I'm based out of Miami, Florida. Do you still think there is a stigma surrounding the condition um, in general society, in healthcare? What's your opinion on that? I think there's a huge stigma. I think one of the biggest one is that sickle cell patients are drug seeking. When it comes to sickle cell pain, we know the pain is extremely severe where narcotics and opioids really are necessary to treat the pain. And when you think about sickle cell specifically, there's such a major psychological burden where you could be completely fine out with your friends, having a great time, and then out of nowhere, be hunched over and unable to walk and in pain. And we have studies that show that the majority of patients try to self-manage at home as to avoid the judgment and the stigmatization at the hospital. So once you finally get to the point where you can't manage the pain at home and you go to the hospital and you're met with resistance by doubting providers and just having to prove yourself being in pain and worthy of receiving pain medications, there's no other disorder that I can think of that has to deal with this and the fact that it primarily affects people of color just amplifies what that racial issue is. So I think there's a lot of implicit biases among providers that ultimately impact the care that patients receive. So I do think there still is the stigmatization just from the drug seeking standpoint. I've, contact, uh, I've connected with a lot of patients in Africa and there's a whole other stigmatization of women thinking that they're being cursed or there's a perception from others that they're cursed because they have sickle cell and why would somebody want to be have a wife with this person or have children they should find somebody else who's healthy so there's a whole stigmatization and, and group of people who just don't even admit or talk that they have sickle cell because they're just fearing of having that isolation from the community so it's interesting to see the difference in stigmatization across the globe but at the bottom line it's all about just the fact this condition is so misunderstood I think. So would you be able to bust some of the myths that you've heard about sickle cell? So I think we've already busted the myth that sickle cell patients are drug seeking so we can push that one to side. Yeah. Another myth I've heard is that sickle cell trait is a milder form of sickle cell disease. So again sickle cell disease you're getting two abnormal copies sickle cell trait, you're only getting one abnormal copy. So it's not a milder form. Sickle cell trait, yes, generally it is benign, but there are specific complications that are unique to sickle cell trait. There's this cancer called renal medullary carcinoma, which is very common in sickle cell traits. So if you ever have blood in your urine, that's a warning sign. So I think we kind of need to bust the myth that sickle cell trait is only a benign condition. Okay. We talked about the myth that hydroxyurea causes infertility, which we know is not true. And hydroxyurea is producing so many positives as opposed to negatives that we're putting babies on it. So if we're putting babies who are newly born on this medication, obviously there is much more benefits to this medicine, allowing patients to live longer with less complications. It is not only a black person's disease. Yes, it is most common among people of color, but I have patients with blonde hair, blue eyes. Uh, there's around 40,000 people of sickle cell in Europe. We talked about the origins of sickle cell trade and how we had those foreign Africa genetic mutations and that one mutation that was in Saudi Arabia and in the Middle East, which is how we can see it really affecting people of all colors and races. It is so hard to talk about sickle cell for me. It is so, so hard. Sometimes I literally cringe when I have to discuss it with people because I don't know, it just makes me feel like, I don't know, like I'm weird or something. It's very uncomfortable. I can talk about it with um, my family, obviously, um, but when I meet new people, it's, it's so, so uncomfortable and I hate it. And I, sometimes I can't even figure out the real reason why I find it so uncomfortable. Is it just because it's a disability? Um, is it because I have trauma from when I was younger and had so many episodes? I don't know. I just think the main thing is that I feel that, you know, I'm a bit of an outcast, so I don't really like to verbalize it all the time. When people do ask me, I do try and be more open, especially within the last two or three years since I've, especially since I've um, transitioned from my college to my university degree. 
meeting people and, and learning to be more open has helped me but it's still something that I, I would say that even if I look confident talking about it most of the time I am feeling slightly uncomfortable. SC not only impacts the sufferer's mental health, social life, education and growth but also affects the people around them. I've always wondered what the effect on my family has been and what they did to cope with the situation. So meet my parents who have first-hand experience with all my life's difficulties. We had already been educated about the condition, the medical condition. So we were aware of, you know, some of the things that will affect us as parents. Um, I don't think we were prepared in the sense that we, we, we were going to face the critical situations because there's one thing you being educated to know about something, then there's another area where you have to go through it. So for us, we were educated. Yeah, that was the preparation bit. In terms of actually facing the situation i would say that was the challenging part of it yeah it was very uh sort of dynamic because it there was not one episode over the same and so we had to adapt most of the times um we had to be more aware we had to be a bit more sensitive um and so on so the impact varied you know in, in you know that we we had to um, sort of quickly adapt to different situations because um, we had you know issues where we will be at work and then we'll be called that there's an episode there's a crisis so we have to drop everything and, and come back home there are times that maybe after a day's work we've all enjoyed ourselves going to the evening just going to bed then boom you know she gets Goes into, into crisis, crisis and then the worst of all was when you know at dawn maybe you know 1 2 a.m and then she goes into crisis and it's like we need to wake up come alive quickly within five minutes decide whether we call in the ambulance or we're driving her there to the hospital so you know and then having to adjust not forgetting that we had the younger ones as well so it, it was quite you know they, they as i said the impact was quite varied and and so we had to adjust you know um to so many situations and conditions um unforeseen situations where when we're going on holidays we, we don't know when Ruth will go into a uh, crisis. You yeah. know, we, we, we tried as much as we can to think we were prepared for mm. the um, uncertainty, um, but then it was one of those random things that could happen. And we'll be on holidays or when we're preparing to go on holidays, Ruth was always a priority because we needed to make sure that we had her medications, mm -hmm. you know, she's not exposed to cold. And even with that, it wasn't guaranteed that um, she was not going to go into crisis. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we knew we could not stop, you know, the, the outcome of any, any situation. So we just had to get ourselves We tried ready. our best to... Yeah, to yeah. fit in any, any situation. Yeah. But it, it did put us on the edge. That's one, you know, major impact because we're always ready, you know, to, 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 to sort of rescue any situation. Yes. So it did put us on the edge and very, very made us very watchful. And um, also for the rest of the family, the siblings, it also made them a bit more responsible because they had to, or they were playing with you or whatever, they had to all keep an eye and watch the signs and symptoms, you know, and then prompt us if we were not aware or we were not around. So, um, yes, it had its, you know, different Ups impacts on and us, you know, and, um, yeah, you know, I wouldn't say negative impact per se, but it, it did have some kind of impact that uh, pushed us to adjust from time to time. Meet my two closest friends, Ashley and Aisha. As the dialogue about sickle cell is now open, I thought it would be good to touch base with them too and get their perspective on things. We met at uni. Yeah. Um, I remember it was in class. I thought it was bougie because she came with full face makeup. Oh, that's Ruth. Yeah, yeah that's Ruth. full face with the brown lipstick. I thought you were so pretty but so bougie because she was wearing a nude coat as well. Do you remember the nude coat? Oh I my god. I wear that every I single time. I'm happy you looking bougie as well. I used to think, damn, she 
you'll wake up early just to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, you came looking presentable. I was like, okay, cool. So what were your like initial thoughts of um, me or when I spoke to you guys about sickle cell? Like, what were your initial thoughts? How did you feel? Did you know anything about it? Yeah, because my auntie, she's got um, sickle cell. So I've kind of been around lots of her my whole life. So when she's like had her crisis and stuff, and she lives in Hyderabad, so when she'd have that, she'd like always tell me and my mum. And so we'd know about the ins and outs of it. So they didn't really like worry me when you told me, like, oh, you've got sickle cell. I was like, oh, I know what that is because my auntie's got that. So it wasn't like, it wasn't a big deal to me. Okay. Unfortunately oh, for me, I did actually not know what sickle cell was. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when you hear it circulating around, but you actually don't know like the depths and the definitions. So I actually searched it up okay. because I didn't want to be like, Hanging out with me, and I don't yeah. know like the realms of like what you're going through, whatever. So I had to search up and then I understood. And even still, like hanging out with you and stuff, mm. then I understand like sometimes it's cold, you know, yeah. I have to remember to take yeah. a scarf and stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah. you know, that's like my biggest concern making friends because I never used to have them when I was younger, when I was in high school. No mm. friends at oh, all. That's mad. Nobody could like adapt to my, <laughs> my situation. They didn't understand why randomly I could get ill. You know, they didn't understand the pain episodes. And um, I, at the time, because I was so shy, I couldn't express to them what was really going on. Mm -hmm. And so it was hard for me to talk about. And if you did know, fine, but it's not something that I wanted to like actively yeah, talk cool, about. Yeah. But that's that's very interesting that you said you had to look online. Yeah. Is that because um, you wanted to be careful of my feelings or because oh, most of the time I really like being um, uneducated in certain topics. So if we're going to talk about sickle cell, yeah. I actually want to know what we're talking about. Okay. So um, obviously, if it's an illness, I want to know like what's going on and stuff. So that's why I had to go like I had to search up. Okay. Okay. So you've already told me that you had to research to find yeah. out about the condition. So Aisha, have you ever had to like go online to find out what sickle cell is? You know. No. I actually have not even. I know it's 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 in, it's in our the black community. That's yeah. one thing I do know. But I haven't yeah. actually probably researched it in depth. Like I know like you have a carrier yeah. and then there's like non-carrier feeling then obviously you make a baby that baby could potentially gonna have sickle cell. I know that kind yeah. of it it's crazy but apart from that I've not kind of looked into depths of it. Do you guys know it's about the stigma? No. Not at all. Not at all. Okay, that that means lot. to be honest that's healthier then. That means that mm. it does it doesn't mean that everybody has a bad mindset yeah. about it. So that's that's also a positive thing. What would you say to encourage somebody who is struggling to have friends and they have sickle cell? What would you say as an encouragement or advice? Or even on the flip side, somebody who doesn't have sickle cell, um, but they meet somebody who does, like, what advice would you give? Give the person. Oh, that's a good that's question. Because yeah. 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 I'll take it from you guys' point of view. You guys don't have it, but I do. So yeah. what would you advise? Just to educate yourself mm -hmm. if you're a person without sickle cell. Mm -hmm. And don't be, don't be ignorant, and yeah, don't be afraid yeah. to ask questions. Like if you've got a solid friendship with someone, you know that you can have good communication, good conversations. Ask them the questions and sit down and say, "I want to know more." So I might like, ask random questions, so please don't be offended, yeah. and set that foundation and just ask questions and then find out things that you can kind of do together still. But like, if you're a really adventurous person, for example, you're going to go bungee jumping, or maybe that friend can't do that, then you're going to meet in the middle and say, okay, so what can we do together to still maintain yeah. that friendship and still have fun together? Yeah. So yeah, just talk, communicate, be open, be oh, yeah. understanding. This is John James, the Chief Executive of the Sickle Cell Society, a national charity dedicated to people living with sickle cell here in the UK. They have done groundbreaking work for the SC community and I had the opportunity to speak with John about the charity's contributions in the community. In simple terms, the aims and goals for the charity is to do everything in our gift to empower those who live with uh, sickle cell and their families. And we do that through um, a variety of means. We do that by advocating advocating for change in policy. We do that by running activities for uh, children and adults with uh, sickle cell. We do that by running a uh, five day a week helpline service. Um, and to give you a, a real example, we have been campaigning for new treatments for uh, people with sickle cell for some time. Uh, and last year, November 2021, 
uh, we finally got the National Institute of Clinical Excellence to agree a second, <laughs> and it's only the second one, the second new treatment license in the UK, well, license in England, uh, for sickle cell. So that's an example of, you know, hard work. Um, but the future looks generally bright for people who have sickle cell because the, there are new um, clinical trials and treatments such as gene therapy as well as new disease modifying treatments which are um, currently in the pipeline at the moment. So right now we are at my old high school stop today and it's just genuinely so strange being here. It's, it's been almost like 10 years or something since I've been here. I think it's a positive thing because it's almost like a therapy session for me as well because I'm remembering fond memories, I'm also remembering not very good memories but it's all part and parcel of my journey. During my form time um, I would have people in the class that would really genuinely make me smile and things like that and just just thinking about what they did for my day is so lovely. They didn't even realize how much they were making me smile, although I was going through so much. But the worst memory I can think of is just the fact that, because I was in and out of high school all the time, I would kind of be, never be able to make friends. So it was like, I'll, I'll be there for a bit, then I'll get sick again. I wouldn't turn up for like three three months on end and then by the time that I got back they had already formed their own friendship groups and things like that so that was like the worst memories that I can think of. Remembering everything that's happened I think moving forward I'm just hoping and wishing that students with disabilities are able to have a full education even if they have to work from home. I wish that more resources will be poured into students who maybe have to work from home because they're constantly sick or something. I also wish and hope that there's a good support system or something where the students who maybe don't have that same um, interaction with others will be given a chance to integrate socially with other students. I think that's something that I lacked and I just hope that there's more general awareness of conditions that are not talked about enough like sickle cell. I think I've come very 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 far and it's making me excited for the next seasons and steps in my life. Um, coming out of here I had zero GCSEs and I remember the day that I picked up my GCSE results. I could remember me just almost coming to tears because that like E's and U's and D's, that's all I saw on my record. And going from that to then being able to finish my HNC course in college and then went on to do my bachelor's in university and then now just being on my master's course um, is incredible. And that just tells me that there is nothing that people can't overcome because this was like not the greatest experience for me, but reflecting on it, I'm now seeing how much progress I have made. Um, and also maybe I shouldn't be too hard on myself because um, a lot of good things have happened since leaving.